Hello Grade 11! Welcome! In our previous video, you learned how to determine the polarity of molecules using the electronegativity difference of the atoms present in the molecules. Now aside from electronegativity, molecular geometry is also one good way to determine the polarity of molecules. By simply looking at the geometric shape and arrangement of electrons, we can also easily determine whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin sa video ito. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar given its structure. Kick. Hey. Molecular geometry pertains to the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in a molecule. Understanding the molecular structure of a compound can help us determine the polarity of the molecules. Para mas mabilis nating matutunan ang lesson ngayon, kailangan muna nating tandaan ang dalawang basic concepts na ito. Una, ang Lewis electron dot structure or LEDs. At ang pangalawa ay ang valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or the Vesper model. Let's start with the Lewis electron dot structure. When you were in grade 9, you studied the Lewis electron dot structure where the valence electrons are represented using a dot placed around the chemical symbol of the element. Let's use oxygen as an example. Oxygen has six valence electrons. In writing the Lewis dot structure, imagine that the symbol of the element which will represent the nucleus of the atom has four sides. Then, we simply distribute the dots. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The same goes for the other elements like fluorine with seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Or hydrogen, one dot for one valence electron. Well, actually, Mabilis mong malalaman kung ilang valence electrons meron ang bawat elements by looking at the periodic table. Kung anong family sila nabibilang, ganun din ang kanilang valence electrons, so as their Lewis dot structure. This means that each element in family 1A has one valence electron, family 2A with two valence electron, family 3A with three valence electrons, Family 4A with 4 valence electrons, 5A, 6A, and so on. Using the Lewis dot structure, we can show chemical bonding more easily. Let's use water, H2O, as an example. Now let's have oxygen first. Remember octet rule in our previous video? Sa LEDs, mas madali nyo siyang matatandaan dahil sa bawat side meron dapat tigda dalawang electrons. Ang electron na meron ng kapartner, we call this the lone pair. Sila yung taong masasaya na sa kanilang love life. And yung single, we call it the bonding electrons. Sila yung nakikibond para magkaroon ng kapair. Ngayon, alin ka dyan? Chai. So for water molecule, we simply draw a line connecting the bonding electrons of oxygen and hydrogen to show the chemical bond. We call this the bond pairs. May partner na sila. In the Lewis structure of water molecule, it shows that oxygen as the central atom has two lone pairs while hydrogen bonded to it has none. Oxygen and hydrogen are bonded through single bond which count as two bond pairs. Another example is ammonia. Nitrogen has five valence electron. In the Lewis structure of ammonia molecule, it shows that nitrogen as the central atom has how many lone pairs? Yes, one. How about the bonding hydrogen atom? It has none. Now, there are three bonding pairs as shown. Now, to predict the shape of the molecular geometry of the molecule, we follow the Vesper model or the valence shell electron pair repulsion. The key ideas of the Vesper theory are one, Electron pairs stay as far apart from each other as possible to minimize repulsions. 2. Molecular shape is determined by the number of band pairs and lone pairs around the central atom. 3. 
treat multiple bands as if they were single bands. That is in making the prediction. And fourth, lone pairs occupy more volume than band pairs. Now, let's come to the molecular geometry. You have to remember the arrangement of the specific number of electron pairs and its corresponding disparate shape. First, we have linear. If there are two electron pairs bonded to the central atom and the central atom has no lone pair, the arrangement of electron pairs form a linear shape that is 180 degrees. This may be likened to a game tug of war where both sides exert force pulling each other forming a linear, a linear molecule. Next is the tribonal planar. This is the shape of the molecules formed when there are three electron pairs bonded to the central atom and the central atom has no lone pair. Trigonal planar. We also have the bent which is formed when there are two bond pairs in the central atom and the central atom has one lone pair. The geometric shape form is called bent. Next is the tetrahedral. If there are four electron pairs bonded to the central atom and the central atom has no lone pair, the geometric shape is called tetrahedral. We also have trigonal pyramidal with three band pair and one lone pair. This is trigonal pyramidal. Next is also called bent but compared to the first one, it has two band pairs and two lone pairs. This is bent. Next is trigonal bipyramidal with five bond pairs and no lone pair in the central atom. And last is the octahedral with six bond pairs and no lone pair in the central atom. Now, how do we predict the shape of the molecules given the Lewis dot structure? Let's have again water as an example. So this is the Lewis structure of H2O water. Now, count the number of electron pairs around the central atom. There are four electron pairs around the central atom, two lone pairs and two bond pairs. Next, determine the molecular geometry of the molecule. As we have discussed earlier, considering the number of electron pairs, two bond pairs and two lone pairs, the water molecule is bent. And that is how water mo molecule looks like. Whew. That's so much for a basic concept, I know. Now let's discuss how to determine polarity using the structure of the molecules. If you can recall in our previous video, a molecule is nonpolar if the shape of the molecule is symmetrical. This is due to the equal sharing of electrons, hence no dipole moment is produced, thus the valence electrons are shared equally on both sides of an atom. Example, oxygen gas, fluorine gas, chlorine gas, and other diatomic molecules containing atoms of the same element. The central atom does not have lone pairs, as you can see. All its electrons were equally shared to another atom of the same element. Another example of a nonpolar molecule is carbon dioxide. You have found out in our previous video that carbon dioxide is a polar bond according to its electronegativity difference. But the geometric structure shows that the molecule is a nonpolar molecule since there are no lone pairs in its structure and the electrons are equally distributed making it a linear shape. Carbon tetrafluoride is also a nonpolar molecule. There are no lone pairs at the central atom and the bonding atom are of the same kinds of elements. Nonpolar. A molecule is said to be polar if the shape of the molecule is asymmetrical. This is due to the unequal sharing of electrons between atoms creating a dipole moment, meaning there are partial positive and negative in the atoms of a molecule. Example, hydrochloric acid and hydrofluoric acid, where chlorine and fluorine atoms are more electronegative than hydrogen. Therefore, hydrogen is attracted to chlorine and fluorine. 
The central atom or one of the central atoms has lone pair making them unequal although the molecules are in linear shape. Other examples are water and ammonia. Water is a bent shape and ammonia is trigonal pyramidal. The two molecules have lone pairs and the central atom creates a partial negative charge and the bonding atoms creates a partial positive charge forming a dipole moment. Hydrogen is pulled towards the central atom which is more electronegative forming a polar molecule. And that's it. I hope you learned something today. Now it's your turn. Do the activities in your learning activity sheet. I'm expecting a perfect score. In our next video, we will relate the polarity of a molecule to its properties. We will discuss how molecular geometry affects the physical and chemical properties of molecules and their reactivity towards other molecules. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.